Hey everybody, thanks for being here. This week we're fishing two awesome lakes if you want to load the boat and fill the smoker with great eating kokanee. First Stampede Reservoir and then Bullard's Bar. Brought to you by Corning Ford, Procure, Placa Craft, Yakima Bay, Peline, Max Lure, Fishfield, Brad's Fishing, Rollingflies.com, Polish Charters, Fishhawk Electronics, and Fish Ang Products. Now, if you want to learn how to catch more fish, stay tuned. I'm Justin Wolf, and this is Angler West Television. Not far from Truckee and Lake Tahoe in Northern California, Stampede Reservoir is a unique, higher elevation lake that is heavily stocked with kokanee and a great place to take the family for quick limits of awesome tasting fish. Today we're with Rob Reimers of Rustic Rob's Guide Service, Scott Call and Doug Belmore from Brad's, and Denise Liu. We've got an early start, a lake full of fish, and good bait. I always like to put my corns on. See that? See the closed part? Mm -hmm. Put it right there like that. That way it holds on better and the scent can run out the back. Mm -hmm. And you running a double corn setup or? Yep. There, so put the tuna inside. Usually you running the bigger chunk of corn on the it doesn't front matter. one. <laughs> I always run the big one up front and the small one in the back. We got uh, just regular canned tuna, but I get the tuna in oil. And then I add a little bloody tuna to it. Broke your bloody tuna. And I use this concentrated anise. Put six drops per can of tuna. And I run two corns on here. So they kind of get to rotating like this. Works pretty well. So our color lineup this morning, this is one of Rob's favorites, hot pink. We're also gonna have the uh, hot melon, uh, Lady M, which is one of his all time favorites. Let's see what we have over here, Rob. The uh, hot melon That's is, hot is melon actually my new favorite. <laughs> Another hot melon, and then that looks like a fatal attraction there. Yeah, fatal that attraction. That looking pretty good. And then we've got uh, various kokanee dodgers. What what speed are you running? Is it same as all other kokanee lakes? No, or? this is a unique lake. Gotcha. I found out last year the hard way. You know, instead of running one five or something like that, you want to run 0.9 or 1.0. Oh, I mean, slowing slow, it way down. slow way okay. down. Yeah. All right, good to know. Yeah, yeah, usually we're on one and 1.2 to 1.4. Yeah, it's, but when it's the bite's hot, it doesn't matter. You know, it'll, it'll, right. it'll work. But when the bite gets tough, you got to slow it down. And it's those little things, and that's why he's such a good guide. It's those little things that he pays attention to. You can go out and just keep running the same speed and not get hit, but, you know, he's he'll adjust. On our counter, we're going to go 25 back. But by the time we pull your line down and hook it on the downrigger, it's probably more like 15. You want every every line at 25? The side ones go 30. Okay. That way they'll will look like a big old Alabama out rig out there. <laughs> That's right. The size have been running a little small this year. Um, when I was up here last week, we caught a ton of fish. Most of them were 10 to. Oh, we got a fish on. <laughs> Feels like a little guy. Most of them were like 10 to 11 and a half. But you just kind of keep going and we threw them and. We kept our two limits of uh, 12 to 14 inch fish. Yeah, it's just a little guy. Fishing Games planning so many fish in here, they decided to turn this lake into a brood lake. So they're really dumping a lot of fish in here and I think they're overstocking it and they're causing the fish to stunt a little bit. We're not getting the fish that we were just a few years ago. You know, we're getting a little smaller size. How deep here, Rob? Go 40. Pop it off. Another little guy, go ahead and break off, buddy. That one's on the pink. We got some players here. Yeah, right here. We might get all five rods out today. I'm not sure. <laughs> I think he might have come off too. Yeah. Waited too long on him. So far, color really hasn't seemed to matter. They're hitting on just about everything. They're aggressive, but uh, we're looking for a little bigger fish. So yeah. keep trolling around until we find them.
A little guy or a little bit bigger? No, this one's even, well, okay, you never know until you get up. He's fighting a little better than the last one. Not sure if it's a net fish or not, but we'll see. It's a fish. That's uh, probably big enough. Maybe. Close as well. Yeah, that one's on Lady M. Lady right? M. The old Lady M. Welcome back to Stampede Reservoir. I'm Justin Wolf. We're filling Brad's Kokanee cut plugs with tuna laced with bloody tuna and anise. And the bite is red hot. Right. You gotta be a little easier bringing them in. Off. You come in that fast, you're yeah, gonna you're gonna pull them off though. So. Oh yeah. Oh, you gotta you gotta take them in mouth. real slow. Yeah. Well, this is my Super first soft. trip on Stampede. First yeah. trip actually for Kokanee, which is great being able to fish with these guys down here. So appreciate it. Next time I'll be just a little slower. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Quite a bit slower. <laughs> yeah. Easy, easy, yeah. easy. Yeah. Easy. Right. Just finessing this. Don't pump it. I'll, pre I'll Don't pretend pump I'm with a. That looks like a better one. Oh, I like the action of this rod. Yeah, I love those rods. Man. There he is. Yep. He's a little guy. Yeah. <laughs> He's pulling it away from me. Are you playing with me? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> That's I'm curious. Thank you, buddy. LDR, long distance release, exactly what we want. <laughs> a lot of those. On this size, yeah. <laughs> so most times when we're fishing these, every time we bring it in, we'll uh, rebait it. But right now, the bite is so fast and furious with the action and the color on these, we don't need to rebait it. So when things slow down, I will rebait it every time. Getting a new scent trail in there makes a big difference. But for right now, we're just putting these right back out. Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. Yes, sir. <laughs> Easy, soft, retrieve. I'm learning. I think I'm gonna get it. I think. I think we. I don't know if he's still on, but no. Farmed him off. Dang it! Hate that when that happens. <laughs> Rookie. <laughs> yeah. There, there's another chance right in the middle. All right. Off the river. Okay, here we go. Pour myself up. He popped himself off, and he's still on. No, we don't want him. I don't think, right? No. We don't want this guy. We'll kick him back to get a little bit bigger. You know, we're going to get some bites because we're putting the fifth rod down, so we can't get all five at once. We got to get, <laughs> we got to start getting bites. Looks like a little bit better fish. Is it always a white corn? No, it's a uh, Jolly Green Giant Shoe Peg corn. Shoe Peg corn. Yeah. White okay. Shoe Peg though, right? Yeah. White Shoe yeah. Peg. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to start dropping a little bit deeper. I know it's the side rods. Those are shallow rods. We haven't been getting very many fish on them anymore. So we're going to start dropping down. We'll go down, start down five feet, maybe go five more feet in a little while. Yeah. It's right in the sun. Fish on. Oh, that's a nice fish. There's fish over here. Uh, I don't think there's a fish on that. She's just letting it no, out. I was letting that no, one out. This one. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. a better fish. Yeah. That's a keeper size. That's a keeper size. Yeah. Yeah. What I like to do, I like to run my hooks back to back. This is the way I like to tie my leaders for the cut plugs. Uh, it works pretty well for me. I put, make my hooks come out back to back like that. And I uh, put three beads on there. And I like them back to back because they, uh, they make it wobble more with the corn on there. 
And then from there, I also take my rubber band off the cut plug and I put it on as well. So then you thread your cut plug on here. There you go, just like that. Ready for some tuna. Might have got him, Chief. like a sailfish. Got him. Perfect. <laughs> uh, <laughs> perfect landing. Once again. Boy, he was like a little half pounder steelhead just bouncing around, flipping, flopping, flipping. And that sunshine, that is so cool, that color. We've got more fishing to do, but first, here's your Fishfield Tackle Connection. Now, if you're looking to buy kokanee cut plugs or any of the super baits, then Fishfield's the place to go. They've got a great selection, plus a lot of the hot new colors. Just go to fishfield.com and check them out. We've moved from Stampede Reservoir to another Northern California lake that is also great for catching numbers of kokanee. Hidden in the foothills southeast of Oroville, Bullard's Bar is well known to bass anglers, but it's also loaded with kokanee. This morning, Rob Reimers is fishing with his friend Mario Castillo. We'll make a short run to deeper water near the dam and then deploy the kokanee cut plugs. Put the little tuna in the hatch here. Pack it down a little bit. Squeeze it, put your rubber band on. Now I put my rubber bands, I put the leader through the rubber band and that keeps me from losing the rubber band. I was always, you know, I'd catch a fish and we'd net it and the net would knock off the rubber band. I was always trying to find new rubber bands. But you put it through here and it'll always be there. Plus the fact it slows the cut plug down and that seems to work. You know, so you can vary your speeds more. Um, it, it just seems to work better for me. I'm fishing about 90 feet of water. Uh, fishing down from 50 to 70 feet. And uh, that's where they start staging up in the, in the autumn and the fall. But we're a little early this year. But uh, they start going deeper and bunching up and uh, that's where we get the bigger ones at, the bottom of the schools. I'll go down 70 feet, you go down 65 on yours. And then we go shallower on the side. I have a, I like to do it that way because my side rods are always shallower because they're drawing fish in from the side where they're back rods, they're gonna get fish from underneath the boat. So they'll tend to hit it better that way. Plus the fact that if we're going along and we're um, all of a sudden we're only catching fish on the back rods and I know I need to drop down some more. Rob has a fantastic recipe. Uh, I think he calls it his uh, kokanee candy for smoking the kokanee. Smoked kokanee is absolutely phenomenal. Probably the best way to prepare kokanee. Some people like to steam it or deep fry it, but I think the best way to eat kokanee, in my opinion, is smoked kokanee. We got some smoked kokanee right here. We were talking about it earlier. It's a little bit of a chili spice on it. Some pepper. Here you go. Try a piece of that. Now we're going over a school of fish right now. They're uh, down a little bit deeper than the 70 feet they were before. So we may be dropping down. We dropped this one down another five feet. We may be going down as deep as 80. We'll just have to kind of play with it. There's some right there. Nice little group at about uh, maybe 79 feet. Ah, he might have got off. Nope, I think he got off. Sometimes they hit the thing so darn hard that uh, I think they rip it out of their mouth. You know, they only, maybe only got one hook and they rip it out of their mouth when they hit it. I'm gonna hit it too hard. That is that new Seahawk in the uh, kokanee cut plug size. So it looks like it may be a winner. Oh man, that's how he got off too. No, he's there. Feels like a smaller fish though. Got that smaller fish legal. So shallow rod. We must be fishing the right depth because we're getting them both on the shallow ones and the deep ones. Put your line count, Rob. I'll get the net for you if you want. Yeah, go ahead. Want to just crank him in nice and easy. Like right there is perfect. He's just doing what I call coming along for the ride. His wiggles sort of seem kind of like a smaller fish, about like the last one we got. Oh, this is probably. Get over here. Watch out, Manny. Yep. <laughs> 
<clears throat> about the same thing. So we're keying right out, see? He has such soft mouth. It's like some fish down there. This is corn. This is a, a Seahawk. Maybe a winner winner chicken dinner. <laughs> we're going back to Bullard's Bar, but first, here's your Yakima Bay Minute. So we're gonna hook up a maglip here. So this is just a tuna wrap maglip. Um, and this is just a single hook setup. So we kind of play with some different options on hooks and stuff, but this just has the, the bead chain swivel and a single hook on the back. And then is what we do is we clip the double duo snap here. Just gives a little more freedom and wiggle, but there it is, maglip. Welcome back to Bullard's Bar Reservoir. I'm Justin Wolf. The fishing is great and we can almost taste the smoked kokanee. Oh, it's so fat, man. That's nice. It's chunky. so healthy. Chunky fish right there. See him right there on the... Go. Oh, we got a fish. That one's, that one's good. We see him right on the bottom. You know, it's more difficult to fish for him that way because you're always hitting the bottom with your downrigger weights and taking a chance to get tangled up. But that's where you're going to find the bigger fish at. My record's losing nine in a row up here. Yeah, he's a little better. He's fatty. A little better. Oh, yeah. You got one? Yeah, it's a fish. I haven't met a bad fish yet. All right. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's a good fish. Oh, don't say it when he's there. When he gets closer. That's a fatty. I know. Nice one. Yeah, feels like it could be bigger. We're definitely getting bigger fish up here nowadays. The reason being is we're not planting as many fish. Because we get a good spawn up the arm there, so they don't need to put that many fish in here. And they, they were putting 80,000 fish in a year, which is just too many fish. That's why they were so small in here. Then we dropped them back to uh, 60,000, and the other year, 55,000. And you can definitely tell the difference in the fish, the quality of your fish. Oh, this one looks a little skinny. <laughs> There's only so much food in this lake. It's like your fish tank. You overload it with fish, and you got little tiny fish your whole life. But if you got fewer fish, they're gonna grow bigger because they got more food. Oh, he's over here. Gobble. Oh, this one just popped off. Oh, what did you say <laughs> about losing fish? Uh -huh. <laughs> well, I was gonna. I was trying yeah. to bring, bring me I better get this one in. I can help you. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the way to help me. Oh, right there. Look at that eagle again. Yeah, I kind of like these smaller fish like we're getting up here. I think they're the best size for smoking because you fillet them out and you can eat up the pin bones and everything just fine and you know they're nice and nice and thin they're not too thick and they uh, get a lot of good smoke flavor through them he's a good good fighter <laughs> look at it. we made a move we were bites kind of slowing down where we were we weren't getting as big a fish as what I was anticipating over there so we came over here to give it a go and this is our third hookup already so we, we did something right Net, net man. On my right. Oh, sorry. Good fish. Oh, that's a nice one. I dropped this fish hawk down there to see what the temperature would be since it's so hot on the surface. And it is almost exactly the same as my fish finder on the surface. But if you go down, you can see it where it's 5 feet at 82, 81, 10 feet, 15 feet to 80, 79. Go down here, let's get, skip down a little bit. Get down to 50 feet, 61.4 degrees. Oh, well, there's yeah. 60 feet, and it's uh, 58 degrees, 60 feet. So it's probably 55 degrees down there at 70, which is really what you're looking for. So uh, yeah, this thing's pretty sharp. 
<laughs> Feels like a decent fish. We just got one here down at 65 feet, got him on. So uh, that goes right along with our 58 degrees we had on the fish hawk. And uh, it's working just about like it's supposed to work. They tell you they want to ride right around 55 degrees. And there we go. Kind of a little guy, but we'll see. All right, the action continues. Get him down, dip him down a little bit. All right. It's a good one. Yeah. It's so fat. Makes them look bigger than they are. You leave them alone. Double hooked, look at that. They are nice and healthy in here. You don't get those long skinny fish like you get in other places. Oh yeah, well up here man, that's common. You have all your rods to be in the boat, you're not even fishing. And then the screen will be loaded with fish. You know that's gonna happen every time. Got a rod right behind the rod. Yeah, see when you go um, back to back like we were showing the hooks earlier, got one on the top of his mouth and one on the bottom of his mouth. He ain't get he ain't going nowhere. I hope you found today's episode valuable and it helps you catch more fish. And be sure to watch this episode again and hundreds of other episodes and helpful videos on the Angler West TV YouTube channel. And follow us on Facebook and Instagram. And remember, without our sponsors, there is no show, so please thank them when you can. Now get out there and do some great fishing.